spring is in the air. The season when nature, asleep during the winter months, bursts into life with new growth and vigour. Ducks return to their favourite haunts. And foals, with newly found strength in their legs, frolic on pastures lush with spring growth. It is during these spring months that the wise farmer is haymaking the look it used to be. Now the farmer and a full line of matched equipment can do the work fast and economically, ensuring abundant reserves of top quality hay. Hay that will ensure that off your mouth these are a to Australia's economy. Look at these cars. Even on lush pastures, they need hay fed to them as a supplementary ration to balance cream and cheese, rich in taste and full of nourishment. Yes, even the most important member of the herd also responds to nutritious feeding. From these cattle come the succulent, juicy steaks and roasts that we like to see on the dinner table and which help to build healthy Australians. Australia depends primarily upon her 130 million sheep to maintain a favourable overseas trade balance. But idyllic scenes such as these are not always the case. Drought can take its dreadful toll of livestock, as it did about 10 years ago, when approximately 30 million sheep and cattle died from lack of food. Jim Higgins was in that drought, and he's just experienced another one. He didn't suffer any stock losses this time because but let Mr. Jim Higgins tell his own story. The water to keep them alive. Some of my neighbours were lucky. They had a little feed left and they bought hay, grain or anything they could to try and keep their stock alive. But there wasn't enough. They lost a lot of stock in that drought. They always said, we won't have a drought here. But I'd learnt my lesson the first time. Droughts are so easy to beat. This is the way I beat the last one. Yes, by using hay. Over the years I did a lot of pasture improvement. Until now I have acres of pasture like this. Rye grass with a thick sole of sub and white clover. Nature provides these lush conditions and we can conserve plenty of fodder for drought times if we take advantage of good seasons. Just look at that strawberry clover. A lot of feed there ready to be conserved. That red clover, or cow grass as we call it here, is just at the right stage for cutting too. This is what I call the king of fodder crops, lucerne. Just about ready for cutting by the look of those few yellow leaves at the bottom of the stems. Some of my neighbours have begun mowing already. And that's the first step in the old system of haymaking. But it's too slow these days. You run the risk of damage from the uncertain weather and a lot of quality in the hay can be lost. At times like this you need fast haymaking equipment. I use modern methods and can do a lot in a short time just when the crop is ready for cutting. Let's go down and have a look. That's really cutting hay. A six foot swath at four miles an hour. That works out at two acres per hour. I've no worries about getting the crop cut quickly with this outfit. My modern tractor with its fast working gears, hydraulics and three point linkage saves me a lot of time. I can adjust the speed to suit the crop for clean cutting without clogging the cutter bar. Let's have a look at what's underneath the sward. You see, no ragged edges and none of the tender new shoots for the next crop have been damaged by the cutter bar. The drive is so simple. The power comes straight from the tractor power takeoff to the top pulley and through a short V-belt drive to the pitman drive. Yes, that cutter bar really lays it down. This mower is so easy to handle. Just a light pull on the hydraulic control lever and the cutter bar is raised immediately. What could be easier? 
No pausing at corners. Just keep on going at a steady four miles an hour. This mower is just as good at cutting other hay crops. You see what I mean? Cut as clean as a whistle, still at the same fast speed with the farm oil tractor. The sword board clears a path for the inner shoe of the cutter bar to stop clogging at the knife head. A safe mower to use too, because it has a safety trip built in to allow the cutter bar to swing back if it hits anything solid. And that's a good idea, keeps maintenance costs down. There's well-cut material for first-class hay, cut at high speed just when the crop was at its peak condition. Given just the right time in the swarth, the side delivery rake moves the mown crop into an even, fluffy windrow so that the warm air can flow freely through the hay to ensure an even cure. The leaves and stems are properly cured in the windrow and retain their field green colour. There's no danger of losing the raking teeth. They're clipped together so that they can't break off and become a danger to my baler or stock. In slow motion, see how important raking speed is to good hay. Raking too fast leaves are lost with loss of valuable protein. Too slow, the hot sun bleaches out the quality. This AOS 6 tractor is travelling at four miles an hour, raking about three acres every hour. Fast work when compared with old methods, and a straighter, more even windrow. And that's what I call a good windrow of lucerne. And windrows made by this rake in grass haymaking are just as good. Oats is not the easiest crop to handle, but the long stems are firmly rolled into a good windrow by this rake. Now this is why I beat the last drought. Improved pastures and fodder crops handled by highly efficient machines. It isn't hard work either, but it's the speed that I really like. What a combination. My latest piece of machinery is the B45 automatic pickup 